Hello everybody, and uh, today I just wanted to do this video because I kind of, you know, I didn't really, I should have been like doing more of the Mr. Robot as it's going on, you know, instead of it being, um, this might be a lengthy video or not, but the thing is, I just didn't really feel like I had the authority to talk about because, you know, the episodes are so um, heavy and there's so many different themes and different, you know, I didn't feel like I could be able to talk about it, you know, and have it, you know, be something that is, you know, really high quality or whatever. And then I was like, eh, I mean, I, I'm going to try my best, basically. So, you know, from the episode 2 all the way to where we last left off in 10, we got three more episodes. And what's crazy is I, I was shocked that we now get the hack you know, in terms of season, you know, episode 9, because it was crazy is this was built up from all the way, well, it wasn't really built up from the very beginning, but basically from season 3's finale on, which is, you know, almost a whole season's worth of episodes, we've been, you know, talking about this hack of, you know, the Deus group and all that. And it was kind of bizarre, because when I first saw the title of F Society is going to face off the Deus group, I thought, oh, well, for sure... This is only going to be, you know, about, you know, Elliot, you know, facing off against them. Why the F Society? But then the mask gets brought back. Darlene does the video. The F Society leaks all this information, you know, uh, thinking on the spot kind of thing. The whole hacking thing. They brought the hacking back. That was great, you know. Um, then we had, like, episode 8 with the whole key thing. And this was after the big, you know, relevation of, you know, Elliot being, you know, uh, molested and that was I was I don't know I was kind of not really that surprised by it but I was more in line with like wow you know I'm always I'm always whenever I see a big reveal I'm always thinking back like wow so you know when you if you rewatch the series you know how would that look um you know knowing the information we know now and the same thing was like when Tyrell before you know in before the past you know and he we thought he was dead, but then he ended up showing up alive. That's very much kind of like how I felt, you know, um, with that reveal. I wasn't, I was shocked. I was more surprised, you know, and I was like, wow, you know, and then I kind of thought about it more. And so that's kind of where that would, you know, end up going. Um, and same thing here. Um, you know, that was a very dark plot twist for sure. I mean, it was so dark that they had to put a hotline up, um, but then I was, the thing I was most surprised on was because of the Vera thing. You know, it was kind of unclear whether Elliot's father was really a good good guy, you know, um, or he was just kind of a victim of circumstance, you know, being in, you know, uh, a relationship he didn't want to be in, being in fatherhood that he kind of didn't seem to want to be in um, because he had almost no interactions with Darlene. Um, but in reality, it's kind of like, uh, it just puts in perspective just basically everything that we've seen thus far and and then in ep episode he had the key and <laughs> that key has shown up before i guess um you know other people have pointed that out but the key is pretty important because it's probably you know to his room well they, they say it's to his room but i was thinking it's probably to something else in the room too um because it just seems like if it was just to the room it wouldn't be enough um, as it's like, because Mr. Robot, they set a very high bar at what the kind of reveals, they, they were just doing these crazy reveals, or just uh, things were happening, so when you constantly have to build up that ladder, you have to do something, so like the finale has got to be, the finale has to shock us more than, because the hack is already done, so the only thing left is that machine thing, and if it's time travel, or if it's a parallel universe, that, that's the only thing that'll push it over the edge, and like, it, it'll, It'll be like the lost thing, you know, where they were in a period when, like, they were, like, dead or whatever all along. I hope that it, it won't be like that, but, you know, that's the kind of risk you run when you do something like that. Um, you know, and then the whole episode was, you know, done very, theme you know, theatrical with the, the acts and, um, you know, the very, the very, very play-like, you know, atmosphere of, like, the lightning and having basically only two rooms in the two rooms you know the, the brightness of one room with the fire you know like the, the ignition to to basically restart in the other room that's very dark and, and, and wet and cold you know and so it's kind of it's pretty 
visually appealing again. And then we had episode six, you know, where we had, um, you know, that <laughs> that ridiculous. Like I was so annoyed with Elliot the fact that he he did that to that woman because that woman, she not only was just she was just caught up in circumstances like that that uh, larger set man with the mustache from like I can't remember his name but it was like from like season one like when they were doing that big hack and like that was pretty messed up and he he actually felt like bad about it but in this episode he doesn't really feel bad about it even though she's almost gonna kill herself. And that was that was pretty messed up, um, you know, and even even Mr. Robot, you know, um, like took a side so was like, whoa, like we're gonna do this, you know. Mr. Robot also has gotten a lot of great character development. Um, he is he has been vulnerable, and he never was vulnerable before, so that's very important because when a character like that, you know, is very seen seen uh, it's very um, you know misty and mysterious, and you know we don't actually know what it is. And then when the veil is lifted up, you know, and, and we actually see what the kind of person um, that Mr. Robot is, because I didn't think that he was going to have his own uh, personality or person because he was just kind of in a, an illusion or a split personality by um, Elliot himself. And now it's there also seemed to be a third personality, which makes sense um, because there's been incidents where neither of them, Mr. Robot or Elliot, haven't remembered something and memory loss has to do with the fact of another person taking over so that makes a lot of sense too and then episode five we had the i believe that whole crazy like we got to get we get like we got to do the hack there was barely any dialogue but there was like that chase scene that went on it seemed like it went on a little too long but uh it did serve its purpose um you know, thematically, it was like one of those action movie kind of things, and it was really, you know, Mr. Robot re reinvents itself all the time. That's why, even though it has a small audience, it wins awards and does well with, you know, the fan, rep um, you know, the fan interaction kind of aspect. So, you know, that eight plus episode there, you know, especially because the last episode was just so, ugh, you know, blah. You know, and, and it just felt so much dread. This one was like so much like high octane. Like we gotta go from the beginning. We gotta, gotta go, 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 go. We gotta do this tax, and we gotta get the hell out of there. Like, like they do like the the whole the whole three D printing of the guy's fingerprint was awesome. Um, just I could see like if MythBusters was still a thing, they would probably try to do oh can we do that kind of thing. You know, like that's how crazy that whole thumbprint thing was. You know, uh, being out and straight up just hacking the machine. And Darlene hacks, which is great because, you know, she's got a lot of character development as of late seasons, you know, compared to the first two seasons, not not as much. Um, and then, season, you know, episode, I believe, four was like that, like I said, that really dread, that snow, that boring. It was, it was meant to serve as a character um, study more than anything, you know, between the dynamics. We needed to know, we, you know, until, uh, Tyrell could not die until we knew why he just liked Elliot so much, and we find out that he just does, he thinks that Elliot doesn't give a shit about anything, and that he just kind of does his own thing, um, and he compares clothes and all that, you know, like expensive clothes to what Elliot wears and all that, and in reality, that's just farther from the truth, as Elliot says that he does care quite a bit, so, yet again, that's uh, circle back around to like the first time they meet and it's like why why is he so interested in them and there's that whole red red wheelbarrow thing and it's just it gets brought up you know that doesn't get brought up again um, but then like at the end of the episode he finds that thing I honestly was just in denial that he died because I honestly thought he was gonna serve a bigger purpose but the fact that he died and ends up getting brought up in the deus group thing and because he's not there and wowing the deus group they're just kind of just you know waiting around for this person that's never going to show up and i just love how in that episode the uh the old man you know i i'm terrible at the names uh, but uh, we we know from the very beginning that he you know the e corp guy he's gonna die he's gonna die at any given point so i wasn't shocked by that i wasn't surprised by that but the way i think he went out was a bit surprising after all that you know he gets shot on the stairs but the the best line is when he talks about Tyrell and says, "Oh sure, you know, so what? Like Tyrell, um, you know, 
he's he's not there. I don't know where he is. Like, in, and it's so funny because it's like, from his point of view, it's like all he knows is Elliot's gonna do something. You know, like kind of basically hack them of their money, but he doesn't know anything beyond that point, which is just great. He sacrifices money, you know, which is great because it's kind of like this interesting dynamic of he sacrifices money and, you know, she sacrificed his daughter, you know, to this cause that doesn't exist any longer. He doesn't have the money or, you know, um, the White Rose in general doesn't have the money. Um, and that's kind of the main point that, like, I think that's why they care so much about the money because she she wanted to go back in time in order to prevent that guy that he wanted to, you know, bef they killed himself, you know, way back, you know, when we saw his backstory. Um, that's clearly what he wants to go back in time for, I think. And so the fact that he doesn't have the money and the fact that he, he killed, she straight up killed that, you know, the old guy in the streets with people watching and the fact that the cops came and, like, Dark Army had to eliminate them that's a big thing, like, now you're on the run, so you can't do what you want to do, you know, and I think for the first time, White Rose is going to be very, a very vulnerable person in the next three episodes, like, it's crazy, I, I don't know what's going to happen, because in episode 10, we just had the Darlene thing, and the Dom thing, and boy, well, that was, that was sweet, but very frustrating, I just wanted them to be together, because they're just such a great couple, um, I, it's not very often that, you know, I pull for, like, couples particularly, but I think they, you know, complement each other quite a bit, you know. In that moment, it's like, Darlene finally does something on her, by herself, and, and she, she doesn't want to go to Budapest or whatever, and, and then, you know, uh, that meme song that plays, you know, it's unfortunate it's a meme because it actually isn't the worst song. And Dom actually says, you know, she sees that sign, like, once you go, you can't come back. And so she's basically, like, saying, like, well, I don't want to leave the airport. Like, I don't want to leave, basically. And she goes on to Budapest to, you know, have a trip. You know, something that she has probably never done. Because she talks about the, the making of the grilled cheese. She's always wanted to do that, but she's never made it. So uh, those are some pretty, you know, impactful things. That two characters finally get to do something they desire. And I think Darling might might get back with Joey Badass. I don't know what he wanted, but he kind of alluded to, like, I don't know if it was, like, prostitution or if it was, like, drugs or what was going on there, but it was kind of alluded to something like that. But, of course, Leon's back, and he's great. You know, he was great when he came back, and he's a hired hand. So the interesting thing is he is, I don't know if he's ever going to come back again. Um, he could come back and do something else. I mean, it'd be great he comes back, he's been a great character over the years, and then we get, um, I think it's Robert, or, or whatever that guy, you know that guy that, that was, you know, the guy that shows up at the airport, you know, with the, with the, the book that works for the Dark Army, I don't know if, like, is the Dark Army, like, is it a big thing anymore, I don't know, um, but he's, he's there, and it's a pretty big deal, um, so yeah, you know, I don't know where it's going, um, I do think that Elliot's probably going to be somebody that dies, but there's going to be a big deal with the township thing, and with, like, the time machine. I'd rather it be a time predictor, you know, where, like, you could put your, you could put your brain into it, and maybe you could live back in the time, you know, as yourself, or maybe, you know, it's like a virtual reality thing where, you know, you can live back ten years where you were, but I feel like that would mess up your head or something, so I, I don't know. But it's so, it's got to be something. It's got to be something to top all the other ones, because the Mr. Robot can't just end on a fart. You know, it, it has to end on something um, crazy, or at least emotionally impactful. And I think we've gotten a lot more character development than we ever have been, and considering the previous seasons is more like uh, world building and setup. I think it's pretty important that this is like the fourth act of uh, a grand play, you know. So, anyways, uh, that's my take on like the last couple episodes. You know, maybe I'll be doing these like weekly, you know, like uh, 11, 12, 13 kind of thing. Um, it'll be probably a good thing. So, um, see you till next time.